want it? Yeah, sorry. You guys heard the bam that I said because I opened my mic open when I said that because we're excited. It is hump day. <laughs> ready to go. I know, we're ready to go. I am Jaffe Gray. And I'm Brittany Weir. Welcome to the Morning Sprint. We'll bring, be bringing you some of the top stories of the day. Get your day started off on a positive note. Uh, so first we want to start off with a little teaser that we have for you. There is a quarantine in place for one area, but not because of COVID, because of these <laughs> slimy things that you're seeing yeah. right there. Ugh. I'm good. Anyway, how they are terrorizing uh, this new land and why that quarantine's in place. I'll tell you that soon. Plus, get this, guys. It is Workout Wednesday right now. We want you guys to sprint your pins our way. And when we say Workout Wednesday, I want to know what you guys are doing to stay active, whether it's walking your dog, going outside, hiking, and doing all that good stuff. It's also National Selfie Day. I just found that out as I didn't well. Know that. Yeah, it's National take a Selfie Day. Of yourself we, we, yeah, we can do whatever you guys can, but send them our way because we would love to give you guys a shout out. By the end of the show, we're going to go over a couple of those pictures that we pulled from the pennant page. And of course, we're going to talk to Jazzy Jazz. Hope we get more of those pictures coming in this week. First and foremost, before we kick off this sprint, we do have to talk about a story that's making national headlines, and it's kind of a terrifying story. This is dealing with the Canadian aircraft that detected underwater noises in search for the missing uh, underwater vessel taking tours to the Titanic wreckage. You've heard about it. It's now been three days since the vessel disappeared. And the efforts is focused on an area about 7,600 square miles. Get this, that's larger than the state of Connecticut, Brittany. Wow, and the planes, ships, specialized equipment, and rescue teams from around the world are joining this effort. We now know there are five men on board, the pilot and four tourists. A friend of one of the tourists says he just he got a text just minutes before the vessel took off. I would assume they're stuck on the bottom in the mud or somehow entangled in Titanic. It's a search and rescue mission. So first of all, they have to find them. Now, the search will continue around the clock. Experts say that they're just a little more than one day's worth of air left in the vessel. Now, if you're looking at your screen right now, you will see again, the water is nothing to play with. And the fact that these men are under there and they only got a limited amount of time, yeah. a limited amount of oxygen, that's again very terrifying yeah so it's definitely a story that everyone across the country is going to be keeping close eyes on today like we said with only 24 hours of oxygen right. left uh so hoping for a safe return mm -hmm. and obviously we'll bring you any updates on air and online at wslus.com but now we want to get to a story happening out of the hill city in lynchburg uh the city schools police and school safety groups will announce a new project to keep students and staff Safe. So the project called Every Second Counts is raising money to install security film on windows and doors at EC Glass High School. They need to raise about $65,000. Uh, we have reporter Sydney Jacksheimer working on this story for you today. She'll bring you the latest tonight. Yes. All right, and then also here is some news you don't want to sleep on. Not uh, at all. <laughs> we all heard the story this morning. We were very happy about it. Uh, so taking daytime naps may help maintain brain health as we age, so it's a big excuse to nap if you need one. <laughs> exactly. So again, this is according to a new study from the researchers in London. They say habitual napping was linked with larger total brain volume, which is associated with a lower risk of dementia and other diseases. But unfortunately, it has to be less than an hour. I've never taken a nap less than an hour. <laughs> I've tried. It just doesn't work. But get this, too long of a nap can be harmful. And researchers say the average difference between nappers and non-nappers was equivalent to two and a half to six and a half years of aging. So if anyone gives you a hard time about napping, mm -hmm. you tell them you're just trying to prolong your life. You're doing what's good for your brain. <laughs> you tell, you tell I mean, them, girl. You tell, I mean, I'm sorry. I picture like my mom seeing me nap and being like, why are you napping? I'm like, mom, I'm doing it for my brain health. But honestly, when I take a nap, yeah. it's never more than an hour. Really? It is well, never. It is anywhere from 45 minutes to maybe exactly an hour. Yeah. My body just like wakes but she's me just up. She's just like, she, you're a little ping pong though. Like <laughs> literally, people like me, if I hit the bed, it literally takes me at least 45 minutes to get that sleepy wave oh. hit. Then I go to sleep, and then next thing you know, I wake up in the next dimension. I don't know. <laughs> I like literally, that's just me. I, I take long naps, and apparently that's not good for, it's, it's harmful. Yeah. But we did a story about longer naps now, or Taking naps, that's helpful. And then last week we did a story about the alcohol. Like yes. you drink a glass of alcohol or glass if you are a low to moderate drinker, you're fine. So as we you can got see, the news we, you can use. we some healthy jokers we because got we you. drinking and napping. Let us know what you guys think of this. <laughs> are you big nap people? Do you take a nap in the middle of the day? And if so, are you more like me where you only take that 45 minutes to an hour? Or are you more like Daphne where you're out for like a couple hours at a time? <laughs> yes. Let us know in that couple. comment section below. Oh, for sure. Okay, so here's a cool story we got to tell you guys about. This is something super duper cute. It's a Kansas City girl taking her passion to reading or of reading to another chapter. She opened her own free library for her community, and it happened, it's happened because of the help from a 
company that wanted her dream to come true. So Abby O'Neill has been reading by the time she was 18 months old. That is so impressive to I me. Know, right? She learned about Little Free Libraries and wanted to open her own. That is when Shamrock Cabinet stepped in to be a part of her story. Uh, she even held her own ribbon cutting for Little Free Library when it was complete. She brought snacks for everyone and invited the whole neighborhood. She went door to door handing out flyers she made inviting people. She wrote a speech. She cut a ribbon. The, the smile and the hug and the card that I received from her is just like the greatest uh, payment I'll ever get. I felt like I was super special to have somebody build me a free little library. Abby says that she wants little free libraries to be in every state in different places. You know, she reminds me of, have you ever seen the movie Matilda? Yes. Sure, like yeah. the old school version. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the remakes and stuff. I'm talking I about the it. old school version. Uh, but always reading and stuff. And that's just, again, like you said, super inspiring. Says she was 18 months old. That's wasn't so even fun. walking at that time. And she's reading. So, yeah, this is a good deal. I'm so happy. Impressive. Yeah, and I'm happy to see that she's doing it so that other kids in the community could read as well. It's not just for her. It's not just a selfish, yeah. like, I'm just going to get my own books. But And then this company stepped in and helped her out. So yeah. that's a good deal right there. And it shows that if, you know, you want something or a dream or whatever, you just have to work towards it and accomplish it. And I love how she said they said she held her own ribbon cutting yes. ceremony. Because that's the same thing. If you're, no one else is going to do it for you. You got to do <laughs> exactly. it. So I love that she did this. Props off to you, uh, to Abby. Definitely. So. so if you guys want to see the full story, the full package, and hear her little cute voice over and over again, just go to our website, WSLS.com. It is right there. So speaking of kids and speaking of outside and all that good stuff, summer officially starts today. It might not feel like it, but it actually is the case. But here, while we are in Southwest Virginia, mm -hmm. you know, we can see a record low temperature parts of the South are kicking off the summer with excessive heat warnings, though. Get this. In Texas, some people baked cookies on the dash of their car to show just how hot it could get. Obviously, ocean warmth is already record setting and toasty waters are concerned in the Midwest since officials are predicting above average temperatures in most states this summer. So, yeah, they, you know, Texas, they always do something interesting. When I used to live in Texas, it would always, they would put the egg on the sidewalk or yeah. something like that. But it showed just how hot it can get. And the fact that everybody else is dealing with that excessive heat, and we're over here dealing with not that, you know, I'm not complaining. I know, and I like the cookie <laughs> idea, because then you think about it, you go drive look somewhere and you have a little snack in your car. I don't know if you want to eat those. Though. Why not? Oh, no, what if they the get thing. fully cooked? They're on a sheet uh -oh. pan. They're not just like on the car dashboard. They're protected. Girl, and what if they're fully cooked? It's not about that. Look how doughy that stuff looks. It look. It, well, it, you, it would have to sit beside a volcano for it to actually be a bread. This you know is like what? Some I'm cook. eating your cookie dough. I like it. Anyway. <laughs> well, cold cookie dough. You can't do warm cookie dough. That gives you what, what's this? Salmonella. Salmonella. It gets, yes. Yes. Oh, girl. You Either don't way, need I want the cookie. No dashboard cookies. Okay. All right, let me move on. <laughs> <laughs> would you? So like you were saying, it's not that warm here in Virginia. It's actually pretty chilly outside. I had to have my coat and it's been very rainy. So we've got meteorologist Parker Beasley here to tell you about what the rest of the week looks like for you guys. Hey, meteorologist Parker Beasley here. Now we're currently tracking a cutoff low, but as we go into tomorrow, cutoff low starts to move north through the afternoon and through the morning hours. By Friday, it starts to move even more north towards New England, and then it brings behind it a line of thunder showers for us Friday afternoon late into the overnight hours. Future tracker showing rainfall picking up in the south side in the NRV by about midday today and by the afternoon we start to clear up just a little bit. Cloudy skies will persist and then your hourly planner rain chances 80 percent 1 through 4 p.m. and they fall off to 70 overnight. All right thank you Parker one of the newest members here at WSLS so make sure to give him a warm welcome if you see him or follow him on those social media links. But we want to get to a story that kind of is really interesting if you've never heard of this before. Yeah. Uh, there may be the cutest vampires you've ever seen. Uh, they are vampire deer. I've never heard of this before. Yes, look really how adorable. Cool. They are adorable. There's yeah. some little Edward Cullens That's out there, like though. That's like Huey. <laughs> But you get it? Because, like, they're yeah. all cute and attractive, but I don't... Oh, no, I'm, well, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm not sure if they yeah. actually blood suck and all that stuff. But here it goes. <laughs> Four of them, just three weeks old, being cared for at the zoo in the UK. And the species is called vampire because it has a set of sharp fangs. Says the baby girl measured less than five inches at birth and weighed about 14 ounces. That's oh. just about the same as a can of soda. I want to cuddle with one. They look so cute. <laughs> well, the actual species name is Chinese water deer, and they're considered a threatened 
species. Oh my goodness, they are so cute. Look at them See, there. But I would prefer Chinese water deer over a vampire deer. I know, deer, I though. prefer that too. But <laughs> do you see? Could you see what they look like when they do get older? They get those vampire teeth. Yeah, I, yeah. No, I, have, I haven't seen. Uh, so I had does to it Google, just stick had, out? No, I had to Google it this morning because I had to know why. And there's pictures. It's like these long things that come out of their mouth and stick outside like this, like out. Oh, That's so they're not why. like the sharp. Yeah, little... so no, it's like sharp, but they kind of like come out. They kind of like, like stick those out of their ram, mouth. like ram hole horns a little bit sort of like that but they yeah. come this way but their teeth yeah you know and that's, um, i had to look it up because i'd never heard of this before what do you call those wild who is pumba what is pumba she, he's a wild hog right yeah pumba, something like that right Warthog. Warthog. Oh, yeah, so they got those things, so it's, it's kind of yeah, like, okay. Similar. It's similar to that. All right. But they're so cute as little babies, and they remind me of my mom's dog, Kiwi. Yes. So, uh, can you imagine Kiwis are going to grow up, or these Kiwis are going to grow up, and can you imagine that carrying or pulling Santa's sleigh? No. Okay. <laughs> I did not think about that. <laughs> right, we're going to move on, guys. Let us know what you think about this Chinese water deer, or vampire deer, whatever you want to call it. Okay, oh, okay. so we got to get to this teaser video that we were telling you guys about. Uh, it's kind of weird, and it's kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to feel about it, but Florida County under a quarantine to combat these giant African snails. Look at this. Just take Oof. it out. So the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services says Broward County has established a quarantine and treatment area in response to this invasive species. And giant African land snails eat their way through stucco, plastic recycling bins, signs, and more than 500 species of plants. They're hungry, mm. my goodness. <laughs> well, officials say not only are the snails one of the most damaging type of snails in the world, but they're also pose a health risk to humans by carrying a parasite called rat lungworm, mm. known to cause meningitis in humans. So you want to be careful living in Florida, but if right. I saw one of those, oh, that is just so nasty. Right. They can eat through stucco, like they can eat through the side of your house. Yeah. That is insane. So, I mean, and this is the reason why I picked it as a teaser video. That is some crazy stuff. Can you imagine, like, these just no. running rampant in the street. And like I said, I made a joke about it on Virginia Day. Yeah, just throw some salt on them and That's what you I know, was keep them up. You know, they'll stay in that, that little shell of theirs. I know, there's some theirs. salt around your house. Exactly, but that's the thing. It's just like the fact okay, that this is a thing. The house. This is a real deal, the fact that they are quarantining and telling people to watch out for this type of stuff. That is kind of freaky, man. But can you imagine? I know people eat snails. Do you eat snails? Have you no, ever I've uh, escargot. No, I have never had it, but my cousins had it. And uh, oh, is that I'm what not it's a called? Fan. Escargot, yeah. It's like oh, French. Ooh. It's like snails. Um, but no, I will never try it. I'm okay. I'm good. <laughs> but let us know your thoughts on this. Imagine yes. you walking in your living room and one sitting in your house because mm. they ate through the sassy wall. Yeah, oh, no, that, that would just be unfortunate. And like you say, Stock up on the salt. Get all the hey, salt yo. and ready to go. Okay, so we also got this cool story right here. I know we've been talking about a lot of like weird animals and stuff like that. We're sticking to the animal category and this time with your pets. A uh, girl from Michigan vacationing with her family in North Carolina back in April when her cat, Cinnamon, got out. And residents in the community searched until the cat was finally found. And now after a 15-hour car ride, the two are finally reunited. Look Yay. at Cinnamon right there. Well, a woman who lives at the campground came up with a plan to lure the feline back to where he belongs. I filled that trap full of prayer, filled it with food that, um, that Cinnamon liked. And the next morning, he was in the trap. So the girl says the first thing she did when she got home with Cinnamon was cuddle with him Aww. and gave him all of her love, which is understandable. I wouldn't know what to do if Bo went. Like, if he just disappeared for, like, hours and hours cry. at a time. Yeah, I bet you would. But uh, knowing <laughs> you, like, I think you would morph into a hound dog, though, because <laughs> you go over and beyond for Mabel. Like, <laughs> so I would, I would cry my eyes out if I lost Mabel for that long. But then also say when, you know, you're reunited, more tears because I yes. was like, finally, my baby. Yes. So this is how this girl felt, especially because she was on vacation. She wasn't mm -hmm. even at her home. So that cat doesn't even know where it is. Oh, so happy to see that Cinnamon is back. Maybe yes. It's owner, Shout so. out to Cinnamon. So if you guys want to see this cool story and how the community came together to help them, we got it on our website. And also on our website is the Workout Wednesday, which is for the pinning we're trying to do. You get to uh, sprint your pins, and obviously we're still kicking this off, so a lot of people are still trying to figure out how to submit their pins. So... Just, I'm not gonna have. I'm not gonna be submitting my own pins for much longer. I hope. I'm okay. trying to educate or, you know, kind of inspire I'll, I'll, people I'll to do it. You gotta do it. Well. So 
Basically, workout Wednesday is about what are you doing to be active outside, you know, if you're working out and all that kind of stuff. And this is my baby Bobo. Uh, I got two pictures in there for him, though. That This is one when he was looking back at me and be like, Mama, are we ready to go back in? Yet? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, we were out walking and stuff, having a good time. And then a yeah, girl, Jeff, actually went to the gym. Yay. And I got up to 150 pounds with my deadlifts. So, boo, wow. shakalaka, wow. workout Wednesday. Okay, oh, so go ahead and hit right, him with the next one. We also one. have uh, Gwen Loftus with Jake the Bear looking for <laughs> apples and cherries. So, I guess the bear was getting his workout yes. out there. <laughs> He's going on a little walk, looking for his food as well. So look at that. Look, he has He's at, standing right up. I'm going to say he got the audacity to stand like a human. Uh, the audacity? <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. That's funny. So shout out to Jake. And speaking of bears, I want to get to this one real quick. This was a very interesting picture right here that was submitted. Um, if you guys can look at your screen, I need to get closer. this is through a glass door, and as you can see, oh! a visitor is sitting out there on the patio porch. Rachel Shepard, she sent this in to us. She said she got a little scared <laughs> for this, but he, apparently, you know, he was up working out, trying to figure out how to get in the house and eat some some food. Maybe actually, I think it was the bird feeder. These up bears there. are just oh my god, yeah, they I'm, are on one. They're like humans, man. You know how many pictures we've gotten of bears? It's crazy. Oh, yeah. my goodness. No, well, I, I freaking love it. You guys keep them coming. I'm and sorry. I didn't take a picture, but I did work out yesterday. I went to the gym. So, look at but that. no one wants to see how Yes. You always you always take pictures of your little, uh, your treadmill. This joke is she runs like six miles a day. So, no. Yeah. No, but next time I'll take a picture of the treadmill, I'll show you guys that. Um, mm -hmm. But again, on Wednesdays or workout Wednesdays, tomorrow is Thankful Thursday. So, if you have anything or anyone you're thankful for, please submit it on our pin it. Right. And speaking of pin it, we want to bring in our lovely web person, Jazzy Jazz. How are you doing today, girl? Oh, hold up. Oh, Let sorry, me turn the volume this up. This is a Pixel. Okay. It's a grandma phone, so can you, you got to put me? it on speaker. There yeah, you go. Yeah, I can hear you. All <laughs> right. I got you now, girl. All right. So if anyone wants to submit a pin uh, for Thankful Thursday or Family Friday, how can they do so? Yeah, just head to WSLS.com slash pin, and then upload your picture and hit submit. Um, add a description, which is optional. And it's really that simple, to be honest. All you have to do is uh, just upload a trace from your phone. Add a brief description. You don't have to, and then it'll pin the location for you, and then you'll see it uploaded under all of our pins. All right, perfect. Thank you, Jasmine. So, what do you think about those uh, snails in Florida that are kind of sending everyone oh, into a quarantine? Girl, give me the chills just looking at it. I don't do bugs. I hate bugs. Yeah, and just looking at that little slimy thing just got, <laughs> definitely made my nerves go yeah. up. Okay, Jazz. Yeah, speaking of. Uh, <laughs> Get some salt and put on that thing. I better hey, come back. I heard that. But you can relax your nerves with a nap, Jazz. So we need to figure out, I need to know how long do you typically nap? And don't you dare tell me it is less than an hour because there are many times that I asked you to come out with us and you have fallen asleep hard. <laughs> so what's your, yeah, what's your so length of a I nap? See, I see you calling me out today. <laughs> I am. <laughs> but yeah, I can't, I have to be careful with naps because if I take a nap, I can be gone for like two hours, <laughs> one to an hour. Same. <laughs> Oh yeah, so I have to be careful with naps. Okay. All right. She's, she's calling you out. All right. Especially, like, with our early shifts, I feel like my body just kind of shuts down. And, like, if I'm the kind of person that if I don't get enough sleep, my body will just take it from me. Which yeah. is why it's so important to make sure you're getting the right amount of sleep. I, I, I do it. understand yeah. that. This, this shift can be hard, so we need our naps on this shift. Uh, do we have anybody uh, chiming in on uh, our website with comments about their napping schedules or any other stories we shared this morning? No comments today, but we had a, um, a ton of viewers, 35 views right now. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so guys, please join the conversation. We would love to hear from you guys. We get super excited when you all comment. It's super easy. We would love to hear from you. There's nothing to be scared of. All you have to do is head to our website. There's um, the Morning Sprint article is the number one article on our webpage. It's a comment form right beneath the live stream where you can drop a comment. And it's also you can also drop a comment on our chat box on YouTube. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Jasmine. We appreciate your help. Um, and like Jasmine said, if anyone wants to join the conversation or tell your friends we can get some more viewers, please share the morning sprint with them. But I hope you have a good rest of your Wednesday, Jasmine. All right, you too. All righty. So now we want to get to those headlines coming up mm -hmm. later in our shows for you guys to be looking out for. So coming up in our newscast at noon, uh, the results are in. We have a breakdown of who could be representing you in Richmond this time next year for those primaries. Yeah, this is something you've been working on all day long. So guys, go look at our website, get those results going, and we're going to continue to cover this so you'll see exactly what's going on.
Folks who got consultants starting to get a better idea of what could be developed. Him the largest area that, of land that could be developed. Uh, what was discussed at last night's city council meeting and where members heard an initial proposal for what could go on the land, which is about 150 acres. And a brutal attack in downtown Roanoke left one woman fighting for her life after she says she was beaten raped and left for dead. We have that 10 News exclusive where the victim sits down with 10 News anchor Alyssa Ray to tell her harrowing story of survival in hopes that no one else will go through what she did. It's definitely, uh, you know, an interesting story and we're yeah. so happy to see that she's okay. Uh, but definitely check that out uh, later with Alyssa. All right, girl. Well, you got anything else? No, that's no. about it. I mean, just I uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And like mm -hmm. we said, if you're doing anything fun, make sure to snap a picture of it and send it to us so we can share it right here tomorrow morning on the morning spread. Definitely. And tomorrow, again, is Thankful Thursday. So, again, you can take a picture of whatever you're thankful for. It could be food. It could be a movie. It could be a person. It could be an animal. You name it. It could be <laughs> something. But whatever you're thankful for, shoot it our way because we would love to engage with you guys and show you that, hey, this is not about us. It's about you. So with that, we're done. Uh, thank you for joining us today on this hump day. We'll be back here again tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., WSLS.com on the morning sprint.